Okay, so Wendy Hughes is one of the first people I met in the LA area. When I went down, because Mark Edward was living in the LA area, and I would go down there, and uh, we got involved in sketches group down at the Center for Inquiry down in, in LA. And meeting Wendy was like meeting sunshine, pure sunshine. It was wonderful. She glows. She's friendly. She's just, just goodness. If you could pack, package goodness, you'd feel that. <laughs> She should be listening to her. So, um, Wendy um, has, um, she had had something happen to her, and she's going to talk about it today. And she's going to be talking about romance scams. And when she, I guess she'll talk about this, I won't, I won't mention it. I think it's part of the presentation. But I just want you guys to know that I kind of talked her into doing this. So, but she's a brave woman, and she could have, she could have opted out. And that's kind of my personality. I will, I will suggest that your opportunity is here to do these things, and you have the opportunity whether you want to take it or not. And if you want to do it, I'll help you. <laughs> All right. So I give you Wendy Hughes. Hard acts to follow, and uh, I'm not an experienced public speaker. Um, this is going to be just, if you had seen the article from uh, already that was in Skeptical Inquirer online uh, a couple of years ago, 2022, this is just sort of my presentation of it instead of being on the written page. Thank you, Susan. So, and I, it was, I remember the day I met her when, um, when, Mark brought her to an IIG meeting, and she was just a charming young woman, and it was, and, and we've, our friendship has grown, which has um, been a lot of pleasure for me, and she inspires me in a lot of ways. I'm happy to be here, so thank you, Susan, and Monterey County Skeptics for the opportunity to give a talk today. My talk is associated with an article that was published in October 2022 in Skeptical Inquirer Online. The article was titled, A Skeptic Trips, wait a minute. There it is. There. Ah. Um, over a romance scam. There are other kinds of scams, and in fact, it was a headline article on CNN yesterday online about about scams that, that we need to be looking out for, and uh, not, excuse me, about, about the importance of, of, of fellowship and friendship in our, our human relationships, and not the scams. That was something else. Okay. Um, there are other kinds of scams, such as employment scams, investment scams, and even vacation accommodation scams which is kind of a bait and switch where somebody advertises where they have this nice um, place for you to come and stay in a, a resort town and you get there and it either is not available or it isn't what that was advertised. Your money's already gone. Um, but what I'm going to talk about today is what I learned in a very unfortunate incident. Wherever possible, I'll use gender neutral pronouns. I've been what I call a hobby skeptic. My best girlfriend says, it's not a hobby, but for me it is. I'm not making any money. So it is a hobby. It's something I'm doing for pleasure to, to explore um, claims of the paranormal usually. That's what attracted me to Skeptical Inquirer magazine and Skeptic Magazine and that's whole movement, but it turns out there's other applications of skepticism. Um, so I consider myself a hobby skeptic since about 2004. In the Los Angeles Investigations Group where I met Susan at IIG, the Independent Investigations Group, which is now called CFIIG because they've kind of become even more um, uh, an organ of CFI. Um, I have suggested subjects for investigation that I've noticed just in my daily life that turned into some interesting and creative projects. 
Claims of the paranormal are fun, but sometimes following up on unlikely claims of the consumer beware variety um, is rewarding too. When I submitted my story to Skeptical Inquirer, CSI Executive Director Barry Carr said they'd never published an article on this topic before. After it appeared, some of my friends from the skepticism crowd wanted to know more about my experience. So, I see this as an area perfectly appropriate to explore as a skeptic, an area that deserves attention as much as its close cousin in larceny, so-called psychics. That's Susan and the Amazing Randy. Yeah. Well, this isn't the same picture, huh? It's, it's the same time. I don't know. When was 2012. Yeah. That's actually when I met you. <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> my message today is for anyone who is meeting strangers online and for the friends and family of those who meet people online. Romance scams, in my opinion, are particularly insidious. I was already having plenty of self-doubt. Dating has built-in challenges, such as depending on someone else's experience and opinions over which you have no control to match with your own. Oh. But discovering that the new acquaintance isn't who they say they are and that the entire relationship was made of scripts and stolen photos and data adds a creepy dimension to an otherwise straightforward activity. I was accidentally becoming a victim of a criminal enterprise and in fact being encouraged to engage in criminal activity myself. To be honest, when Susan posted a picture of me during PsyCon um, during her talk and described the article um, to a huge audience, which I just learned this morning or today was around 400 people, um, I had a visceral reaction. At first, I was elated, but later I went to my hotel room to rest and think a while and try not to throw up. <laughs> I was surprised that the strong emotion I was feeling was shame. At some point, my hobby skepticism had become tangled up with a subjective experience that had been very personal instead of, you know, an investigation of a societal phenomenon. My main purpose, as I stated in the article that was in SI Online, was to bring the phenomenon of romance scams into public awareness. I think that's the point of most organized skepticism and activism. We see pseudoscience and superstition used by people to make important decisions in their lives, and we try to advocate for critical thinking and help others by sharing reasoning skills. The dilemma I faced was being unaware of catfish scams. I was lucky that when I was describing my new boyfriend to my daughter, she'd seen TV shows about it, and it could not have been easy for her to say, Mom, he's not your new boyfriend. So, when I began to realize something unusual had happened in the, with this non-boyfriend, I began a little personal investigation. I mean, I didn't drag this to the IG right away. I was tinkering a little bit in Reddit and noticed a solicitation from a TV news editor for anyone who had experience with a romance scam. He gave his email address for contact and I wrote to him. I mentioned that I bet he wasn't having a lot of success getting people to respond, and he wrote back that I was right about that. He set up an interview with a reporter. I am terrible at public speaking, as you're learning right now. Um, and I have a squeaky voice, I mumble, I lose track of the flow of my story, but an edited version of the interview was broadcast nationwide. Kevin one of the regular players in our weekly Thursday Zoom trivia game, recognized my voice and listened to the segment and contacted Susan in case she had missed it. My network of friends has contributed in amazing ways to the creation of this story. <clears throat> I was new to being single. I had been married the first time when I was only 18 years old and divorced, and married and divorced again 
and living in sin for almost 30 years until my partner died. I was a wreck after my partner's death. Nothing had prepared me for the grief, the disorientation, the inability to think clearly about the consequences of wrong choices I was making. If anyone had tried to warn me about scamming and scammers, I might not have paid attention anyway. My main preoccupation was the painful silence, the hole in my heart that was made worse by the ridiculous expectation that I could function the same as usual and the utter failure of my skepticism. This, uh, this is pictures that the, the scammer sent to me of himself. He was supposedly a chef on, on cruise ship lines and so there's pictures of him in the tropical, um, or pictures of someone in the tropical uh, environment with platters of food, and then sitting in the like a cruise ship. If you've ever gone on a cruise, the dining rooms look kind of like the man there on the left. So, um, so fools rush in. Um, Eventually, I allowed myself to try a few dating sites. I wasn't very good at attracting dates, but I did receive one message um, on the dating component of the skepticism bulletin board that actually existed. I mean, I can't even sign it now. It probably doesn't exist anymore. Um, a company the message was accompanied by pictures of a nice looking man who claimed to be a chef who worked on cruise ships. All communication was online, one or two emails, and the rest chatting on Google apps. All commun um, the story was made up, the name was stolen, the pictures were definitely not of the person or persons writing to me. The words were from a script. I've learned that there are boiler room operations where teams of people take turns with laptop computers interacting with victims. The scam was created by someone who put together two and two and two. He or she had a brilliant understanding of human interaction and had figured out the built-in anonymity of the internet, how to exploit people's loneliness, wring out of them money in the form of gift cards, and do it in a way that made the victim feel obligated to the scammer. The deal with the gift cards was that the scammers need the serial numbers and the secret codes that are concealed on, by wax strips on the back of each card. The scammer persuades the victim to buy cards, scratch off the wax to reveal the codes, and transmit pictures of the codes. Dating sites do not allow pictures to be added to text messages. Thus, the pressure to switch to the dialogue from the dating site to another app. The gift cards have become underground currency. That was me and my partner before he died. Um, when things were normal, I was generous but not stupid. My claim is that grief is so painful and damaging that scammers know they don't meet much resistance when insinuating themselves into the lives of lonely people. That's my family. Um, actually, the four people in that picture are dead, but um, you know, you're still related to people after they die. Um, I'm gonna um, read to you, I call it TLDR because it's, it's like the five main points of this that I hope um, make sense. Here's my skeptic self telling anyone who will listen. Number one, set your social media profile for friends only or whatever the most secure setting is to prevent your pictures and other data from being stolen. I have volunteered for some of Susan's things and the things that people put on Facebook just could ruin their lives if the wrong people got a hold of it. And so this is a very similar point that, you know, like the, this, the person with the platters of food wasn't the scammer. It took me months to get over that, to kind of make sense that that wasn't who I was communicating with. 
Set up a separate email account for dating. Gmail is free, and it's important to keep your phone number and your regular email account private. Never, never, never send money, gift cards, images, um, account numbers, anything to a stranger you met online and have never met in person. Don't let anyone persuade you to move your online dialogue off the dating site into another chat, especially not to your telephone, until you have met and are objectively sure he or she is who they say they are. And finally, the reason there's a picture of my family, I wonder if I, I'm not sure what this next picture is going to be. Wait a minute, no, I have to go backwards now. How do I go backwards? I'll just leave that there. That will be in the street and for the next paragraph. <laughs> um, if your family or friends try to warn you that there is something wrong about your new friend that you met online, listen to them. Sometimes we are blind to clues that others who love us see clearly. The dilemma is that the message is hard to hear when the scammer is whispering sweet nothings in grandma's ear or anyone's ear. Young people who are on dating sites are just as likely to be scammed as retired adults. What I left out of that little article, though, is the sense of guilt, fallibility. Somehow I thought it was my fault. I attracted the scammer to me, not the other way around. It's taken me over a year to process, well, a couple of years, to process and accept that I was the victim of a criminal enterprise that is no less hideous and disgusting than any other form of theft, embezzlement, senior abuse, international fraud, Ponzi schemes, misrepresentation. I can't even excuse it as an enterprise that supports the citizens of otherwise impoverished countries. Their business is breaking hearts for money and they're good at it. I wish I had a little more light. Excuse me. For many people, the most distressing part of the coronavirus pandemic is the idea of social isolation. If we become ill, we quarantine ourselves for the protection of others. But even among the healthy, loneliness may be setting in as we engage with pre uh, preemptive social distancing. I wish I was a better public speaker as much as you do. Um, it turns out, and this is something that it took me a while to internalize. It turns out that humans, as well as other primates, you kind of have to believe in evolution to buy this. Um, um, as well as other primates, are programmed to be social creatures. The drive to bond with others comes with the genes. It's so wired in that even temporary isolation, such as the lockdowns during the pandemic, were hard to take. I was so embarrassed by having been fooled by a scam, it didn't even occur to me that I was merely obeying the instincts that came with my genes when I was trying to replicate the conditions that had made me safe in a family for 30 years until my partner died, and my entire life, except for a couple of years when I was young before that. It was between marriages, not very long, but. Um, what I hope this story will drive home is the recognition that our friends and relatives who have fallen victim to a romance scam were not stupid or foolish, they were lonely. There's a reason solitary confinement is considered a brutal punishment. Our species has been built to function most effectively together with others. Our inner ape craves company. The scam is fiendishly clever. The victims are easy pickings on dating sites and social media. People pay good money to bear their loneliness to strangers. The flirtatious script is calculated to attract a victim, make promises to share a relationship. In an additional twist, the victim, moi, describes some kind of ordinary crisis. In my case, it was um, toothache. Um, the scammer writes on the text message exchange their sympathy and advice. This is important. The scammer is trying to take the place of friends and family with whom the victim would normally be sharing this dilemma. And it should not be surprising that when family members try to insist that the victim stop communicating with the scammer, the knee-jerk reaction is to ignore their warnings. If the family is right, the victim has been fooled. If the family is wrong, though, the victim won't get to meet their new boyfriend, or I mean the scammer. Then, soon after, the scammer claims to be suffering an emergency and has nobody to ask for help but the victim. 
The victim feels obligated to help the scammer. The victim must then make a choice, trust a stranger who has helped him or her and who may become his or her next partner, or reason that they have never met this person and can't verify anything the scammer has said. I think the appropriate words the victim needs to hear from family and friends include, have you been lonely, Mom? Figure from the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, is that people reported a record $547 million in losses to romance scams in 2021. That was the earliest figure I could find. Um, that's up 80% from the FTC figures in 2020, just a year earlier. There are support groups online, the one I found most useful because it is full of information about the techniques and variations of romance scams. Scam haters, united for you. It's not my fault they have a silly name. <laughs> um, has 70,000 Facebook followers. 70,000. For comparison, our own beloved CFI, 59,000. I just did a little, just tinkering, fooling around with this. Unitarian Universalist, 64,000. Hells Angels, 18,000. <laughs> <laughs> this was a difficult topic to explore. I hope it's given you some food for thought. Thank you. She's lovely. Oh, we love Wendy. Thank you so much, Wendy, for coming up and doing this. I really appreciate it. Again. Bring some chair around here. Thank you. It's so sad that she had to go through that. And um, I'm telling you, you guys, you have no idea how hard it is.